What about my p-value? If you've analyzed data before, you've probably encountered a p-value. Oftentimes, it's the most important number in an analysis. It's also easy to misinterpret. Let's see why. Every p-value corresponds to a hypothesis test, which compares a null hypothesis of no difference to an alternative hypothesis of there is a difference. For example, let's say you are comparing a new antibacterial drug to a placebo your null hypothesis of no difference is a statement about the population means being equal. This can be tested against an alternative that states the population means are different. Now, after you collect the data and perform the analysis, a p-value, also known as a probability value, will be generated. This value, which is always between 0 and 1, reflects how well the two data means agree with the null hypothesis. If the difference in data means is large, the p-value will be low, reflecting that it would be unusual to observe that large of a difference if the null hypothesis of equal means were true. If the difference in data means is small, the p-value will be high, reflecting that it would not be unusual to observe that difference if the null hypothesis of equal means were true. How low does the p-value have to be in order to conclude the means are different? The most common cutoff is 0.05, which corresponds to a 95% confidence level. Sometimes, however, researchers require more evidence before concluding there is a difference, and they set the cutoff at 0.01. This corresponds to a 99% confidence level. One very common misconception occurs when a p-value is above the cutoff. Here, a researcher might incorrectly conclude the population means are equal. A p-value above the cutoff simply indicates there was not enough evidence to conclude the means are different. A larger sample size might have provided enough evidence. That is why getting a large enough sample size for a test is critical. So the p-value is used to reach one of two possible conclusions. One, when the p-value is greater than the cutoff, there is not enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Two, when the p-value is less than the cutoff, there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. One easy way to remember which conclusion to reach is by recalling the saying, if the p-value is low, the null must go. If the p-value is above, the null we love.